Good day, First World Travellers, and welcome back. Today, I'm taking you to another awesome location in the Hiroshima area. Located just a couple of hours east of the city, this isn't just any old island. Home to over 700 rabbits, Okonoshima also holds an interesting dark past dating back to before the Second World War. So get on the bus, then the ferry, pick up your rabbit food, and let's head to Rabbit Island. Oh, almost trodden a rabbit. So welcome back everyone to a very cold January in Japan. It's not as cold as the Miyajima video, thank the Lord, so I won't be dying of frostbite in this video. So I'm at Tadanumi Port, which is about just over an hour east of Hiroshima, and I got here on the bus. You can get the train, it's a similar price. It's 1,490 to get the bus from Hiroshima Station. You have to get bus number 13. Now, if you want to save a bit of money, which I have completely failed at today, by the way, so learn from my mistakes. You can get one of these, which is a pass, basically. It's 3,000 yen for three days travel, unlimited travel in the Hiroshima area. Now, this is where it gets complicated, so pay attention. There's only two buses to Tadanumi during the day. It goes via Takahara, which you can check out in another video coming soon. However, these buses leave at 8.34 in the morning and the other one leaves at about half past one in the afternoon. The problem you have is in order to get one of the passes, the one I said about, you have to buy one at the tourist information place at Hiroshima Station, which doesn't open until nine o'clock. So basically I'm spending a little bit more money than I could have done today. So probably a bit of, advi bit of advice, a bit of good advice is to maybe do this trip on the second day of a three day tourist trip around Hiroshima that way you can actually get one of these passes so um, let's get on the boat but before we do that can I just make a point about where I am it may not be the best day you know <laughs> it's a bit crappy day to be honest with you but as you've seen from the journey here the, the views are awesome you've got the hills the mountains you know like the mist in the hills as well and also the buildings so I'm not just talking about old style buildings um, I mean the regular modern houses are just so cute and small and, and this is what I love about Japan it's the small towns that really make it because it's very flat you've got all the hills and mountains around very quiet you know it's really it's a really good opportunity to immerse yourself in small town Japan I love it enough talking let's get on the blimmin boat let's go so here we are at Tadanumi port obviously we're going to see rabbits so you can actually buy bunny food um, it's not sold on the island as you can see one bag costs 100 yen so do rabbits eat oranges apparently so brilliant and obviously if you want to save a bit of money you can maybe get some carrots or something at family mart or a supermarket before you get here um, but I've not done that okay this is the actual rabbit food I'm not sure what's inside but we'll find out later or more accurately the rabbits will find out and here's the ticket machine. So uh, 620 return to Rabbit Island or Okonoshima. So as you can tell, we are now at Okonoshima Island. <laughs> this is slightly amusing. We've got rabbits everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they're all very, um, they're very tame. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you a little bit about the um, history of the rabbits here. So basically after World War II, this island was developed as a park. So basically all these rabbits were released and there's around 700 of them on the island. However, 
this island does have a dark history which I will come on to in a moment. It's all to do with the Second World War. But first of all, let's have some fun with the rabbits, shall we? Rabbit food, let's go. Right, enough rabbits for one day. Bugs Bunny has had its day. Let's go on to the interesting side of this island, the history side of this island. It started raining, by the way, and I left my umbrella on the bus. Brilliant. So between 1929 and 44, this island was used to manufacture poisonous gas. There's a poisonous gas museum and the remains of the gas works where they were manufactured. And you've also got some other little interesting war artifacts as well if you just take a walk around the island behind me is the remains of an air raid shelter which was used between those times uh, it's very dark um, let's go and see what we can um, find remains of an air raid shelter let's go and have a look there's all the info how do I get down there okay this is gonna be dark Ugh. am I allowed to go down here who knows? Oh my god, with leaves and everything. A torch would be handy. Okay, as you'd expect, an air raid shelter is dark and you can't see anything. So let's go out of here. Oh, it's very leafy and mildly dangerous. So wear sensible shoes. It's a good job my shoes got stolen in Malaysia so I can wear my hiking boots again. Awesome, there we go. We're out of the air raid shelter. Right, now that we're out of the hole in the ground, let's go and find the poisonous gas museum and the remains of the gas works and one interesting thing about the rabbits as well is that it isn't all sweetness and light with the bunnies they were actually tested on with the um, gases like tear gas and mustard gas I believe and they were all destroyed after the war poor rabbits Now I'm heading up to the oh, observation deck um, to get a good view over the island. Sun's come out now, so hopefully we'll get some good views and then we'll head over to the poison gas plant and see some other spots on the way. I've read that there's some tanks as well, which is cool. Oh, I'm out of breath. Which way do I go? Left? Right? Oh, I don't know. I think that way. Oh wow, what is this? Who knows? It looks like it's the top of a building or something that's buried. This feels a lot like Lost, the TV show, you know, when they're all rabbit, when they're lost on an island and there's all these strange things from the past. I'm hoping I don't end up going back in time or anything like that. Ah, 
Thought I thought this was the top. Turns out there's another 200 meters to go. <sighs> Let's go. Hey, cigarette first. Okay, we're at the top and the floor is steaming. I don't know what that's about. <sighs> Let's see the view. Stunning. Yeah, the sun has now gone in, by the way. Oh, I guess that's um, constellations. You can do stargazing, possibly. Right, let's go down. Okay, I'm finally at the remains of the power plant. It's literally awesome. Let's take a look. So how awesome is that? If you're into abandoned buildings, which I am, you may have seen my video that I did in Pripyat in Ukraine last year. This reminds me a lot of it because of the abandonedness. So this is where the mustard gas and tear gas were produced. Brilliant. It's, unfortunately, you can't go in, obviously. There's signs everywhere saying prohibited in Japanese. You can't go in. So um, although it's tempting to jump over the fence, I don't particularly want to get, you know, thrown in the sea. Brilliant, so this is an awesome place to come if this is the sort of thing you're into. History, abandoned buildings, epic. Oh, almost trodden a rabbit. So if you've enjoyed having a look around Rabbit Island or Okonoshima, then make sure you hit that like button down below, leave a comment as well, and why not subscribe? Because there's loads more videos coming from Japan, including the next one, which is where I'm going right now, which is Takahara. So make sure you stay tuned for that. You can also check out my social media links in the description below, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and also Patreon. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you later. Okay, enough rabbits for one day. Bugs Bunny is not the only thing about Okonoshima, which is really interesting. I'm, oh man, now look at the sun. Oh, there we go.